Thank you very much, Maru, for your kind words. Uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure indeed to welcome you on behalf of Security Watch India to the seventh edition of Secure Cities 2015. This conference would present a vast canvas with renewed focus and clarity to the complex and multifaceted task of protecting people and assets from the threats posed by terrorism and organized crimes. SWI would also, for the first time, confer recognition to projects and initiatives that demonstrate excellence, original thinking leading to out-of-the-box ideas, precepts and practices by leaders, and law enforcement agencies and organizations that would contribute towards making our cities better. Prepared to handle various threats and challenges and also reduce vulnerabilities. Uh, various issues have been very well articulated uh, by Maruf in his very incisive introduction. So there will be perhaps an overlap and that overlap will continue throughout the day, as I can see, it will resonate, because these are the crunch issues which need to be brought home to uh, an average citizen of our country, to the administrators of our country, and also, if I may dare say, a leadership of our country. India is an ancient civilization, a cherished dream of our forefathers an idea of perfection, an idea of completeness, and an idea of the very best synthesized in the crucible of humanity. An India that is empowered thus is the essence of this dream. Empowerment will be achieved through a conducive environment for growth, ingenuity, education, enlightenment, and ideas flourishing in an atmosphere of safety and security. An empowered nation will carry both opportunity and prosperity to far-off extremities of our great nation, thereby bridging divides and building relationships of faith and unity. Ladies and gentlemen, as an emerging power on the global stage, India has to ensure a secure and st stable polity, secure from external threats, and from within the state too. Unless there is peace, there cannot be prosperity. And what does an average citizen want? He basically seeks good governance and a peaceful existence. In other words, Aman and Khushali. Like all democratic nations, our constitution allows boundless freedom and rights and an open society. These also result in certain vulnerabilities and that throw up security challenges. Open and porous borders with Nepal, Bhutan, Myanmar and Bangladesh, for example, and a 7,000 kilometers long coastline in a large urban population estimated to increase to about 40% of our population by 2030 would create an enormous responsibility on all stakeholders of national security. The armed forces, BSF, Coast Guard, SFF, SSB, Central and State Police Forces, NDRF, civil defense organizations and others. The vast array of threats from terrorism today ranging from weapons of mass destruction, gas, biological and chemical, attacks, physical including suicide bombing attacks and also finally cyber attacks can result in mass casualties, spread fear and panic among the civilian population and even social unrest. Even the social media can be misused and as we witnessed a few years ago when in the south people from northeast were made to feel insecure and they attempted to return back to their states because of some uh, cyber 
or internet messages which actually were abuse of that medium. I also would now mention about that these challenges cannot be met only by the security forces and other governmental organizations as very clearly brought out by Maruf in his talk, but have to be faced by the whole nation collectively. Every citizen has a moral obligation and duty to the country which is also enshrined in our constitution. While we don't hesitate to demand our rights, how many of us know the fundamental duties of the citizen highlighted in Article 51A of the same constitution? It is important that we realize that we have a duty and an obligation to our nation. As a people, we are not very security conscious or alert by nature. If we do not want a repetition of the acts of terrorism like the attack on the parliament or 2611 in Mumbai, besides the security forces and the law and order machinery, each one of us has to be more vigilant. A well-known cliche is it takes a community to protect the community. The answer has to be found where uh, any unusual or abnormal activity seen or heard by the millions of eyes and ears must be reported to some responsible person. In this era of IT revolution, this is very feasible with access to high-tech equipment and abundance of mobile phones with cameras and other intelligent devices and methods of real-time dissemination of information. In this regard, besides co-opting the youth and the resident welfare associations and the panchayats and gram samitis in the rural areas, the utilization of thousands of trained and physically fit men, as mentioned by Maruf Raza himself, uh, who retire every year from the armed forces and other paramilitary forces can be a great force multiplier in enhancing the security of our cities and the rural areas. Their role would be of paramount importance in the event of natural or man-made disasters when, when they may have to act as first responders. Therefore, the governments at the center and states and the administrative authorities can ill afford to lose out on this well-trained and disciplined human resource. We need to study also the Citizen Core Program introduced by the U.S. Homeland Security Organization. Today, the buzzwords are smart cities, smart utilities, and smart administration. But they have to be secure too. As the government has taken the laudable initiative of evolving the concept and fundamentals of these smart cities, Security of the infrastructure, critical assets, and citizens should be inbuilt and embedded in the initial phase itself. The greater the contribution of IT organizations in creating a smart city, the greater the potential risk, and this calls for incorporation of cyber security ab initio. In this regard, technology is available in the advanced countries and must also be developed in India to meet our needs in this vital field. To some extent, it is already available. Furthermore, we must learn from the experience of other countries and adopt the best practices suitable to our conditions. Therefore, the relevance and importance of such initiatives between the various players in the security domain, such as the government, public and private sectors, industry and civil society stands out. This event brings them together to discuss security issues, best practices, such as the project Griffin already mentioned in UK, and the US Safe Cities project, as also cutting edge technologies so as to enhance national security and also to promote a public-private partnership 
insecurity. There is eminently uh, a fact that's supported by the Ministry of Home Affairs, Department of Electronics and IT, National E-Governance Plan, Ministry of Communications and IT, the National Disaster Management Authority, several central and state armed police forces and paramilitary forces, law and order maintenance forces, and of course, many sponsors who are participating in this event. Ladies and gentlemen, I have endeavored to share some thoughts and pointers on the vital subject and I'm confident in that the ensuing deliberations and presentations would generate new ideas and prove useful to all of us who have gathered here. Thank you.